It seems like Figma plugins have become quite an important tool for Figma users. And why I'm saying that is because the video that I made about Figma plugins was quite popular. I did not expect that. And it seems like people are trying to find ways to streamline their work in Figma. And of course, plugins help with that. And I'm back with another video. Let's call it episode two of Figma plugins. And maybe I'm gonna do this more often because I keep finding plugins that really are unique and quite helpful. So I have found five more plugins that I use daily in my work and I said, why not share them with you all? So let's get into it. Okay, so the first plugin we're gonna be talking about today is called Isometric and Skew That does the same thing, but is a little bit more accurate or precise, let's say, and I will explain, you will see what I mean. All right, in order to access the plugins, you just go to resources or hit the arrow up and capital I on your keyboard. And let's go to look for Isometric, which I already have it here, but if you don't have it in your dropdown, just go to search for it and run it. You have to have selected an object basically on your page and I selected one so let's open again all right as you can see it gives you the option of left top left top right and right pretty plain and simple right okay let's see so this is left top left top right and right and I'm going to keep it to top right so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and I think it's looking all right I have to close it and I will select the second frame and I will again run isometric open actually i could have just selected top r and what i will do i will bring the first frame to front i just want to show you how amazing this plugin is and what it can do all right so i'm going to layer all this and i'm going to copy this and paste it because I want to make another one. This time I am going to drop down the fill to 5% and I will give it a background blur of 125. As you can see it's pretty blurry and I will give it a drop shadow of 25 axis and 90 blur and an y-axis of 45. All right, so I will bring this to front and I will sneak this underneath. Let me just move it like this. The drop shadow, as you can see, it adds a little bit of depth and it looks like really it's floating on the page. And I will do the same thing with the first shape. 25, 90 and 45. And look how beautiful this is. I kind of love it. And let me add some text on it. Let's just say hello. Let's do the same thing with the text. I have a reason why I'm doing this and you will see why. I want it top left. As I said, I have a reason why I'm doing this because we have another tool that is going to change all these fonts right from here, from this page, which is pretty cool. All right, let's move on to skew that and let's create another shape. Let's give it a nice color of, let's make it more interesting. Okay, and we are going to do the same thing and let's go look for skew that this is a plugin hit run and as you can see you have two controls the vertical skew and the horizontal skew and this is a little bit more precise basically whatever angle looks good to you and you want it to be at you can achieve that so this is a little bit more flexible in that sense which is quite okay okay let's bring it down to 15 and, and 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 40 all right let's copy paste bring another one here change the color let's go with something along these lines and let's bring it up 
and I will give this a drop shadow again we're gonna use the same drop shadow because it's quite elegant I think this is a little bit too bright yeah you can see the drop shadow you can even make it even closer than this let's copy paste this one and let's change the color let's do it another one you have the feeling that these things are layered the objects the shapes are layered quite quite interesting and if you want to change the skew you can do this select them all and adjust accordingly i mean right is this cool or is this cool <laughs> I think it's cool. So that is done. Let's move this out of the way. Let me select everything and shrink it down a little bit. Oops. Select again, move it here. All right, so now we are, are going to test the font picker. So this plugin is quite easy to use. What you do is just select the text that you have on your Canva and of course go to font picker. run font picker and it's loading and you have all these fonts here to choose from let's try this one okay let's try another one this one and another funky one Ooh, yes this is nice and one more there you go so you can simply sample fonts for your projects the easy way i think this tool is quite handy because you don't have to select the text one by one and go and choose the font for each you simply have the drop down list on your canva and just scroll through and change super fast let me just move this here i mean i think it's super handy in my opinion all right, let's move on to accidentally great font pairing. I mean, that's a very long name for a plugin, but it's absolutely fantastic and you will see why. So the way this plugin works is basically pairs fonts in a random way for you. You just like roll the dice, create fonts, and let's see what fonts we can come up with and you will see how interesting it generates them. All right, so I'm going to select dark mode because I'm a fan of dark mode, but you can leave it unchecked and you will have like the fonts generated on a white background, obviously. All right, let's hit create and look at that. This is how they present the font pairings. How amazing is this? Let me just zoom out so you can see better. Let's do another one. I mean, you cannot not love it. It's aesthetically pleasing and not boring at all. And it's so easy if you have a client to send them this typography identity to them to see, to get an idea of how their maybe project would look like, let's say, as an initial recommendation for typography. Let's create another one because I love this. Where is it? All right. Let's go down and... How beautiful, how elegant, I love it. And as you can see, you have the names of the fonts generated. They are named here, of course, at the top of the frame, but also in the document itself. I mean, this is, it's lovely, really. I couldn't have done this better myself if I did it from scratch. All right, let's move on to our last plugin of the day, and it's called Super Gradient. And I am a sucker for gradients. I'm always looking for ways to generate gradients. I have tools for that outside of Figma, but I wanted to find something in Figma. So let's look for super gradients. Super gradients run and no gradients found. Let's create a gradient and let's call it test. And create and this is our given option 
you can either add more points on the gradient bar you can switch between linear to radial and angular i love the angular ones to be honest you can either reduce the, uh, the percentage let's go to 90 percent yeah let, let me do this one so you can see let's reduce it to 10 percent it's basically transparent let's go to 50. i guess you you get point you can move them around and you can also switch you can switch from here angle the angle and you can also export the code so it's copied to clipboard let me paste it here and it's a big one let me just switch it to white and let me break it down and if you are coding websites from scratch you basically simply insert this in your css file and voila you have a gradient and let's also look at the collections they have i'm a fan of this kind of gradients actually i'm a fan of all kinds of gradients and you can save them as styles and they are saved basically locally in color styles as you can see here on the side i think this is a very useful plugin if you work with gradients if you want to see what other plugins I recommend, watch this video here. And if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video. And I'll see you next time.